In this next video, it's going to be a very simple example of how you can take uh, a stored procedure and from within it, use not just one, but a couple of different table variables uh, together. So here's how we would do that. First of all, let's go, uh, we're in our ACME database, we're going to go to programmability, and then stored procedures. And here we have, I think I have to refresh this, oh there we go. Okay, and we have here table variable, multiple example, blah blah blah. Let me open this up and show this to you. I'm just going to slide that over there. Okay. Make this a little bigger. What I've got here, I've got two different uh, table variables that are, have been declared. These two guys. Now, the first one is CT. It's really, that stands for customer types. I have a customer type table, and then CU is kind of going to be based off of my customer table. They're related. They're related in these, in these two other tables, in the real tables, on something called a CT key, a customer type customer type is like it's a business, it's an individual, it's a whatever, and each customer has a different customer type, that kind of thing. You notice too, um, most of the other data, there's like the table zone key, the table zone key, there's a display and a description, a display and a description, but each one of them also has a row number. That's just, all that's going to be is like a, a numbering field that I can use, like a one, two, three, four, just an auto number. That's all it really is. Um, and in this, ex I always do that in my auto in my um, table variables, but it's not even going to matter here because we're not even going to actually use that, and we're never even actually going to see what these tables look like. Actually, you know, we could. Why don't we do that? We're going to make one change to this um, table. Let me just explain what's happening. Once we declare them, the first thing I'm doing is I'm inserting the cut the seat the table variable called CT. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm inserting these three fields, the three fields it has other than the row number, and I'm just basically doing a straight select of those fields from the customer type lookup table, you know, right here. No big deal. Then down here, I'm doing a similar insert from the customer table into this CU table. I'm taking four keys, because it also has the lookup field, the foreign key, the CT key to the other table. We'll need that. And then I'm just doing, uh, so to insert these, I'm just saying select these fields from this table, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of the day, what we're doing at the very end is we're doing a select from these two table variables, which now are called CU and CT, because I named them up top, renamed them, gave them little synonyms. Um, and then basically we're going to take bits and pieces from each of the two tables, but we're going to do an inner join. Oh, here's where I named them. Duh, I lied. Don't listen to anything I say. Um, I'm going from the CT table and the CU table. I'm interjoining because they each have a CT key. So where the CT keys are equal, whoops, where this guy is equal to this guy, it'll join them up. But you know what? Before we do that, let's just do a quick select um, so you can see what this is kind of um, looking like. And then we'll just copy that and do it again just so you can see like um, what's coming into these tables and then how it's deriving this data out so let's let's do execute and then we'll do this so we'll see a lot of stuff on here we're gonna execute table variable multiple example blah blah okay so the first little table variable it just got filled up with uh, this customer type information it's a business it's a nonprofit Ugh. you have nonprofits as customers didn't say that nobody said that and individuals, like, you know, my parents are individuals, IBM is a company. I'm an individual, uh, Google's a company. You get it, UNICEF, nonprofit. Okay, um, I've had businesses that were pretty much nonprofit, not on purpose. Okay, so um, down here we have the customer table. You know, we've just got, you know, random people that are in our system, you know, a couple of companies, a couple of people, a couple of other stuff. And then down here, you see what it did is it, it joined everything on the CT column. See how there's two CTs, uh, su two customer type fields like Woody Allen and Dave Merton. I should say comedian, but it doesn't. Uh, CT key of four. Well, four maps to here, so it's individual. So basically what it did is it made a nice report. So it puts the customer, or the customer name here, the description. Love these guys, love these guys. Don't read that. Um, and then, you know, what business type they are. So it's joining all the stuff from two tables, except that we're deriving the information from real tables and putting them in table variables to get that. Why would you do that? Why would you ever possibly do that in real life? 
you probably wouldn't do exactly the way that I showed you here, but on the other hand, if you if instead you were joining two tables that were like ridiculous in size, like say, you know, they're each in excess of like, you know, a million records, and you know, they each go back ten or fifteen years with data, well from one of the tables, you might only be interested in the data from last month or this quarter, you know, a small snapshot of it. And in the other table, you may be pulling out data from the whole country, or it has data from the whole country and maybe other countries, but you may only want the records from like the state of New York or New York City, or even just, um, you know, a, a zip code in New York. So why not pull the data from both of those tables, the, the, the skimmed down data that you want, the filtered data with records, which are a lot less, you know, and then take those two little uh, table variables and join those, other than doing a monstrous Godzilla-sized join on tables that are both in excess of a million records. And you'll, you'll sit there waiting for SQL Server to finish up, and your server will start steaming and smoking and sparking. So that's why you do it. It's a temporary resting spot to put a sliver of information from each table so that you could join those together and work with them, and it makes life a lot easier.